Hello everyone, I'm here today to talk about the second entry in the Basil Rathbone Sherlock Holmes film series. It's called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. This is a DVD I have of it. And a lot of people think this is the best of the 14 Rathbone Holmes films. This is very popular. In my opinion, it's definitely one of the best, but I don't think it's the best. Um, the story here concerns Sherlock Holmes um, and uh, his arch nemesis rival, Professor Moriarty, here played by George Zuko, who a lot of people know George Zuko from the old Universal monster movies, you know, and he's a horror actor, and he's all, in all kinds of films back in these days. This film is 1939, to say the second film after Hound of the Baskervilles. I may like Hound of the Baskervilles a little better than this one, but it's still good. Um, it starts out with... Uh, a, a hearing for uh, uh, Professor Moriarty, played by Zuko, and uh, he almost is, is going to be convicted, except there's not sufficient evidence. So Sherlock Holmes, at the last minute, bursts into the courtroom, and he has evidence that could convict him and send him to the gallows, but he's a little too late, and Moriarty goes free. You know, sounds a lot like today, the way things are crazy. Uh, kangaroo court and everything like that. So now uh, Moriarty is free to continue his crime sprees and he has a special uh, plan of action to work on his enemy, uh, Holmes, although you know, he has immense respect for him. And even although they hate each other, you know, Rathbone's Holmes has respect in a way for the conniving mind and antics of Moriarty. So there's kind of a, you know, a dynamic between the two men there, you know, kind of a struggle, and that's interesting. But anyway, uh, Moriarty plans on kind of uh, sending Holmes a couple of signals, things to interest his very active mind. Says that Holmes is always like a little child with a new toy, always thinking, always plotting, always trying to rearrange puzzles, always has to keep stimulated. So he sends him something to kind of take his attention off the real uh, crime that Moriarty is really engaged in. He sends him a couple of things to kind of trick him and get him uh, to bother, and you spend all his, his efforts on something else as a ruse while Moriarty's free to concentrate on the main crime uh, from under his nose, so to speak. And that's the plot here. Now, uh, there's a very young idol Lapino here who is really pretty in this movie, I think, for what that's worth, is my opinion. And uh, she's really good in the movie. And, of course, uh, she would go on and do other kinds of films. And she was a, 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 a big director. And she even starred in you know, things like an episode of The Twilight Zone. She's in one of them. And she directed, I think, an episode of The Twilight Zone. But uh, she's uh, a woman who calls upon Holmes uh, and after she and her brother receive, uh, as it says here, anonymous letters a strange drawing and it has to do with uh, an albatross hung around the neck and a mysterious date where maybe somebody's going to die and this is all orchestrated by Moriarty and it has to do with his his like trying to throw him off the trail and stuff like that so there's kind of a lot of mind games here going on um, of course this entry also being the second one took place in Victorian times the way Arthur Conan Doyle planned it. You see here Holmes wearing the the deerstalker, I think it's called, cap, which would quickly come to an end because after this film, they would continue for 12 more films for Universal Studios. This is 20th Century Fox. The, fir the first two were Fox. They go over to Universal uh, a few years later in 1942, and they would uh, continue the series for 12 more entries, and they would get uh, more concerned with the modern by the by the, the times the 1940s modern uh events like the nazis uh, and taking over and stuff like that it's what holmes would have to contend with in the next films but i'm getting ahead of myself here yeah this is a very enjoyable film uh in the Holmes series it's a delight always to see uh nigel bruce as dr watson the bumbling dr watson of course as usual the way they have them in these and uh, they work so good together, this pair. You know, a really good team, Rathbone and Bruce. 
And, uh, yeah, I really, really had a good time with this. And i um, looking forward to sharing the others with you. I've already watched a couple more after this. <laughs> but I'm going to, like, slowly put these up. All right? So on a scale of four stars, I would give The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes a solid three stars. Good film. Good, good film in the series and one of the better films, for sure. The best, I'm not sure about that. But I know a lot of people disagree with me. Check it out.